Uh, Commissioner, thank you for coming on with us. This is obviously uh, a situation none of us wanted to wake up to this morning. Your thoughts? Well, you know, this unfortunately is the new normal. Uh, we are now faced with having been successful in defeating ISIS overseas, uh, as they call for a worldwide jihad against Americans. You're going to see more and more self-radicalized people. The good news here is that the injuries appear to be minor, uh, and we do have the subject. So we're going to get a treasure trove of intelligence as we speak. Uh, Joint Terrorist Task Force officers from the FBI and the NYPD are doing everything they can to find out who this person is, who he's connected with, where he got his explosives. Uh, the, the, good, the other good news is it appears to be a malfunction, so he didn't get on a crowded train. But, you know, unfortunately, it's very hard to stop these kinds of incidents. Do you fear more attacks like this in New York City that may be more successful? I do fear more attacks. Uh, there's no better re first responders than the uh, New York City Police Department and the Fire Department, along with the FBI. But you know, millions and millions of people use our public transportation. It's not possible to stop every one of them. Uh, we look for people to, if they see something, say something, if they see something suspicious. But, you know, when you have thousands and millions of tourists crowding you know, Fifth Avenue and the subways and Times Square, uh, it is a daunting task. You know, the terrorists only have to be right once. We have to be right 100 percent of the time. And that's the challenge that we're facing. We're looking at live shots of authorities on the ground there, NYPD, um, fire department, police detectives. What is this investigation? What is the process like at this moment? Well, at this moment, you know, after we've made sure that we've mitigated the situation and preservation of life, of course, is the number one thing that we're interested in. But right now, we have people going to this individual's residence, uh, looking at whoever he's associated with, running his name through every possible database, both here and overseas, to try and find out, is this a loan operator? Is this somebody associated with a radical group? Uh, are there others that we need to look at who may be planning similar events? Uh, this investigation is just at its very beginning, but there are going to be literally thousands of officers involved. How will the suspect be handled that is now in custody? Well, you know, right, right now I understand he's injured. Uh, he'll be taken for medical treatment. Uh, he'll be, you know, there'll be a determination made by somebody uh, on whether he's going to be treated as a criminal or whether he's going to be treated as an enemy combatant. And that determines uh, how much we can interrogate him or not. If we treat him as a criminal and he su suddenly says that he wants his lawyer, uh, we're going to have a hard time getting anything from him. On the other hand, if he's treated as an enemy combatant, uh, we can continue to talk to him. Should he be treated as an enemy combatant based on what I you know? I believe he should, but, of course, that's a big debate among lawyers and yeah. civil rights activists. and uh, But I believe, you know, we are at war. And when we're at war, we should treat the enemy as enemy combatants, not as criminals. This, this could have been an enormous tragedy, and we're very lucky that it was not. When you say that, as someone who knows so much and has seen so much as the former NYPD co police commissioner, that, that scares people when you say that. I mean, what do you tell families that are planning trips to New York City or other other cities in this country that, that fear, fear these types of attacks. Uh, New Year's Eve is approaching. Do you well, still suggest people travel and go about their lives? I do suggest that people travel and go about their lives. Once we start changing the way that we operate in our daily lives, the terrorists have won. Uh, you know, the fact is New York is the safest large city in America. The probability of being a victim of a terrorist attack is you're twice as likely to be hit by lightning. So, you know, as terrible as these individual attacks are, people should go about their lives, and, you know, the NYPD and the FBI and other agencies will do what they can to deal with the terrorism. There are no guarantees. Are we doing the right things uh, to fight this war, as you called it, ab uh, abroad? We are doing the right things abroad. We're having tremendous success abroad. But as we do have tremendous success abroad, we have to be cognizant that these individuals are going to start to look to get individuals like this to commit acts of terror in public areas. And, you know, sadly, 
There's not a lot that we can do about it other than track as many of them as we can until we've eliminated all of them. You know, terrorism is unfortunately called a never-ending war, and we're going to be dealing with this for many, many years to come. The good news is that you know, although we've had two or three in New York over the last few months, uh, it could have been a lot worse. Mm. All right. Former NYPD Police Commissioner Safer, thank you for coming on with us. Good to be with you.